Multiple sclerosis is a very rare form of chronic condition which catches people from uh, tender ages. It can develop from teenagers up to old people. Today I want to talk about how this thing started and I will be very open with you and I will just go straight into the details and explain to you bit by bit what happened that is in the early stages of this problem. Now, uh, let me take it back. Rewind back to 2007. Uh, I know most Kenyans can relate to 2007 because that was the year when we had the infamous or rather the unfortunate bit of post-election violence I still believe it is the most stupid thing which Kenyans have ever done. I was in Nakuru. I was a class 8. At Nakuru Elite Education Center. My classmates, starting with their favorite, Teddy. Uh, Teddy, one day I hope we'll meet in life. And uh, there was Vincent, there was Michelle, there was Christine. There was Joy Naliaka. There were, there were several people. They were my friends. Uh, if you guys, that's a shout out. If you see this video, you, you, you can talk. We can uh, link up and know how you are doing. So, 207, uh, that is when I was in class 8. I was a very talkative person. But unfortunately, in this line of the story, it shows a different thing because I just started changing. So, it was on a Sunday morning and I was supposed to go to church with our big brother. When I was closing the door, he told me, can you please smile? Uh, fortunately, I was not able to smile. So uh, that was the beginning of my troubles. We stopped going to church and uh, we decided that it is time we go to the hospital. We left the house and went to the hospital. In the hospital, uh, what happened is that the diagnosis was very shoddy. I, I might never ever forget that diagnosis because I remember the neurologist said, ah, this is a young man, this is a teenager, he'll be okay. So let us just give him a, a small prescription as well as uh, some instructions on what to be doing to cover his physio. So I was told to be chewing at all times. Like, I don't know whether you know how a cow chews cud. So that is how I was chewing. I was chewing every time and hoping that I would recover. So I started uh, chewing. For the next uh, like uh, a month or so, I was chewing. But unfortunately, uh, this thing was not going away. It was deteriorating. It was getting worse and worse as time went by. So what happened is that uh, I was taken to Nairobi. That is Mr. Masao called his elder brother and told him, I think that's your car. That is me now as a problem and he needs to see a physician as soon as possible. So I come to an hospital. I think it's in Nairobi Parklands, that area. I'm not quite conversant. So I come to Aga Khan and uh, I'm made to see as another neurologist whom I will not disclose his name. And unfortunately, or fortunately, or I don't know how I'll call it, he prescribed the same thing, that this is a teenager, uh, he should just take, what do you call them? Uh, he should just take physio classes, that is physio exercises for the facial muscles. So he prescribed chewing for me, and I started chewing. Chewing, I of course I chewed, I, it was enjoyable for me, I was in class 8. So you can imagine I was in school and I am being told uh, that I am free to chew. So I, I started chewing. I chewed quite well. I was very happy and I, uh, very glad. So I enjoyed the exercise. So uh, fast forward. Come uh, towards the end of class 8. I think towards the end of class 8. After chewing for some time, these problems started getting away. But uh, I have come to realize it was not getting away. It was just hibernating. 
uh, not I'm not I'm not blaming the hospital, but uh, I'm not blaming anyone actually. Actually, I blame myself. So uh, fast forward, now where we are today. The reasons, or rather, the takeaways which I have got from this entire MS, or rather, multiple sclerosis story, are uh, one. A teenager, you should always observe your teenager when they are growing. You should be with them. You should view them. Please observe your teenager, because secrets and teenagers same WhatsApp group because. A teenager, uh, when you are a teenager, you are usually ashamed of yourself, ashamed of saying some things, even uh, scratching yourselves in the buttocks in front of big people. It's usually a shame. So what I would tell uh, parents, guardians, big brothers, big cousins, big uh, whatever, as in you, you are just responsible for your teenager. Teenagers tend to hide a lot. So if I had not hidden uh, my problem for three weeks or more, I don't know the period. If I had not hidden my problems, maybe I would not be where I am today. And also something else which I have learned is that uh, always give a listening ear to your teenagers. I am a young parent, but one thing I know is that I should not be too tough on my child because... Once you are too tough on your child, well, we grew up uh, under very unclear circumstances or rather very weird situations where we had to, to be beaten left, right and center. But I think times have changed and you should not be too tough on your children. So as life goes by, please be lenient and give those children, give those young ones, give those teenagers some time to express themselves because I have a theory or rather I have a belief that if something is pressing me, I'll talk about it. And if I don't talk about it, it means that it is not pressing me. So these teenagers could be having uh, issues, but if you talk to them about them or rather if you give them the safe, quote unquote, safe environment, somewhere where they can uh, bubble out, where they can ventilate, they can talk about things, it will be a better situation than when you are that tough parent. Uh, my mother was the toughest human being I know on earth because she would cane you anywhere. Even in the market, that was a caning ground. So uh, please be, do not be too strict on your children. And something else which I have also learned is that uh, MS is preventable. If uh, I had uh, learned that this could be MS when I was that tender age, I would have corrected many things. I would have gone to the hospital at the right time. I would have gone to the hospital uh, at, the at a time when it was reverse it was still reversible. Please note that uh, as we stand now, as we are talking right now, MS gives you a direct graduation. Rather, there is no even exam before you go to the graduation. MS gives you a direct graduation to becoming a PWD, that is a person with a disability. So if I knew what I know today, if I knew what uh, the amount of information which I have acquired in the last three weeks or four weeks, I would be a different person today. Something else which I have learned is that MS is a chronic and rare form of a disease. By chronic, what does chronic mean? Chronic means it is uh, in one way or the other untreatable. You can just manage with it. Like for me, I know there is MS and uh, the neurologist prepared me adequately. The nurses at KNH prepared me adequately. So I know there is MS. And I know I have to live with a mess. I know I have to manage it. Come rain, come sunshine. So, since it is manageable, let us just manage it. But uh, it is rescuable. Please, take care of your teenagers. Maybe one day you remember my video and say, you remember my talk and say, Kasioko was saying the truth.
and unfortunately this is the truth thank you very much for being a part of me please subscribe share this is the first episode regarding multiple sclerosis i am intending to do like uh, six seven episodes to do with multiple sclerosis and so just join me in the journey let us explain i'll explain to you uh, like today i've started with what happened in primary uh, something else happened in high school actually high school i had two inc incidences but as i said i was a teenager i think high school yeah high school i was still a teenager so there is a lot to talk about when it comes to ms so that is multiple sclerosis uh, so just join me in the journey subscribe like share educate help someone outside there i know there's a parent somewhere who is stranded who doesn't know who has no clue uh, those parents in nairobi we know how life operates we come to the house at uh, nine o'clock in the evening we find our children have slept we leave the house at five o'clock in the morning we leave our children sleeping so technically i'm uh, an Nairobi parent is a parent only on uh, saturday and sunday and unfortunately even that saturday there are some parents are still working so it means that the parent is a parent only on sunday and on sunday it is a church day so people are going to church so help a parents out there who wants to listen to these stories maybe you may never know it could be a breakthrough for someone and uh, as you subscribe and as you invite people please let me hit the 1000 mark of subscribers and i'll be a happy happy soul and i'll be very grateful may god bless you and let's forge forward see you in the next video regarding multiple sclerosis i have decided to change everything which i was doing to focus on multiple sclerosis so uh, unfortunately or fortunately this one will come with a well packaged form of information and i'll be striving to post as many videos as possible in a day and everybody will be happy thank you and god bless you see you in the next video that is uh, as soon as possible and also the theories which i was testing they, they might come up with time but uh, in the meantime let us focus on multiple sclerosis because I have seen this is something which I need to assist someone. I am that kind of person who when uh, you have information, you don't hold to it. You do not just hold so that you can benefit alone. I have a lot of data. I have a lot of information which I have gathered from multiple sclerosis. I have a lot of information which I can talk about from the beginning of this journey up to where I am right now.